Okay, I just wanted to make a quick video here to show a pretty cool feature I discovered today with Audacity. Uh, I've been using, before I started using Audacity, I was using uh, Vegas, which is a video editing application to record narration and audio, which is not ideal, <laughs> less than ideal for sure. So I switched over to Audacity. This is way better. And the only thing I was really missing was the ability to render or export multiple files uh, at once so that you don't have to export or render each one individually and name them and find the path and save and it's a whole bunch of extra steps whereas the nice part with Vegas is I was able to export um, a whole bunch of them they they call them regions in Vegas but in um, in Audacity they refer to them as labels so you can have a region label which is what we have here and the region label, the region is the selection basically. So you, I'll show you how to do it here in a moment, but the, the selection is the region and that's what they refer to again as a, uh, a region label. You could have a different type of label. I think there's different kinds here. There's an add label at selection, that's the region. And then you can have a label at the playback position if you wanted to do more of like a marker. That's what they call them in Vegas, so either a marker, which is like one spot on the timeline, or a region, which is a section or a selection in this case. So right away, that's, that's a huge advantage because you can easily grab this little bar at the bottom and make your selections. You can also label them with text so you know exactly what slide this is. And the really cool part, and this is the best part of all, is when you go to export, okay, you go to export multiple. I don't think it matters if you have something selected like that or not. This window comes up and you can basically select your options, your formatting for those files. Um, I just use the preset standard, whatever. You can adjust this as you see fit. Export to, to mono if you're doing voice, um, stereo, usually for music and stuff, but for for audio narrations one one side one track is fine but down here you got to make sure that this radio button selected so labels i leave this unchecked i'm not even sure what that is but i'm still you know discovering this but this is this is huge so in terms of naming the files one thing that vegas didn't allow me to do was to name those files so i had to come in and which is not a huge pain, but still it's extra steps of having to rename the files after you export multiples. In this case, it'll use the same name or file name as the uh, selection, as the label that you chose. So these are going to be the names of the files here, which is awesome. Uh, navigation, slide 1.11a. That's exactly what it's going to call it. So we can actually see this here happen in real time. So I think everything's good. I could have overwritten some existing files. If there's already files with that name, it'll just append it with a one or a two, I think, at the end. But let's just try this here to see what it does. There you go. So on my desktop now, I've got navigation.mp3. I've got slide 1.11a.mp3 and slide 1.11b.mp3. If I um, close this for a second and we go here and listen Move the appropriate arrow to the right and left of the screen additionally you can go to a slide that you have previously viewed by selecting the title from the menu tab on the far left select each category to learn more about them so you can see it's just it, it's a super easy way to export a clip or a slide narration in this case easy way to select by clicking on this little bar at the bottom I'm not sure what these dots are. I think that might be to, yeah, if you wanted to narrow your selection further, you can do that. Um, just really easy way to adjust things. I haven't really found any complications to speak of yet, but this is, this is insanely uh, convenient. If you're doing this type of work, so I'll just redo my label here. Yeah, so just wanted to share that. Hope that's beneficial for you if the audio editing is something that you do, especially with Audacity. 
this is going to save us lots and lots of time, lots of uh, frustration probably too, and um, make the whole process more efficient. So one thing I'll do real quick before we end the video is just show you how to create these labels. So you can see the whole process from, from start to finish. So basically I'm just going to find my next file here, my, my next um, audio for, for this slide. Examples of records include official correspondence, grant requests, performance appraisals, contract files, and purchase receipts. So that is, let me see here. If I go over to my, my script, that's this one here. So once I've cleaned it all up, so I'm going to obviously remove the empty space. And I've already done the noise reduction, so these empty spaces are not going to have any sort of background noise. And the microphone you're hearing now is not the one I used to record with, so that's why the quality is not great. Um, but basically, I'm going to find my selection, which is right here. You can review it to make sure if you want. Um, one of the important things I saw in LinkedIn Learning was to hit Z to make sure that you're grabbing those zero marks. What do they call this here? At zero crossings. So that'll just make sure that, that your selection starts at zero decibels and ends at zero decibels. That will remove any clicking sounds or anything like that. Potential blips, clicks, things like that whenever you um, combine those clips or that selection with something else. Just a good practice to get into. Once you've got your selection, you go up to, well, this is the manual way of doing it anyway. Go up to Edit and then Labels. And then you would add label at selection. If, again, for whatever reason you wanted to do a timeline marker instead, you would use the second option, which is Control M or Control B. So shortcuts are always the better way to go. So just come back to your selection, hit Control B, label it. So this would be slide 1.11C. And that's it. Now I've got that clip. I can listen to it. Examples of records include official correspondence, grant requests, performance appraisals, contract files, and purchase receipts. Perfect. So now I can render that. I could export it as a selection if I wanted to, but once it's all said and done here, I'm just going to do it all together in a batch. And it's going to be with, again, this export multiple. And I'm going to make sure that you know, my presets are the way I want it. MP3, force export to mono. It's already in mono. Um, but I want to make sure here again that the labels, radio button selected. Uh, if you figure out what this is and you need to include audio before the first label for whatever reason, you can select that. But if you're doing what I'm doing, just have these selections done. So this is the important one here, using label or track name to name the files so that that saves you one big step. And if you need to overwrite for whatever reason, you can do that. Like for example, I've already got uh, those first three on there. So if I wanna just make it easy for myself, I can re um, overwrite those rather. And there it is. And that way it won't append a two on the end. It'll just overwrite the file. So there's the whole process from A to Z, pretty simple, but hugely effective and a big, big time saver. And one other major advantage to this approach is that whenever you come to do edits, which inevitably happens after the client will review the work, they'll come back and say, hey, can you remove that word? Or can you add a little sentence here in the middle? You can easily find your slide this way, come add more uh, space or record somewhere else and then drag it in, copy and paste, split it, yada, yada, yada. It makes it very, very easy to find your audio, everything's nice and neatly labeled, and it just makes uh, edits just so much easier.